Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the World Golf Hall of Fame Moments That Matter After Show. And we're here with the man responsible for sending us all into Father's Day with a tear in our eye, Mr. Hale Irwin. Hale, how are you? I'm great, great. It was, uh, that was a wonderful time. Uh, I, I think it, uh, I reflect back on that period of time with my father uh, frequently. Man, that was cool. I, I think we all got goosebumps seeing that bag get placed in front of you and looking at your old clubs that your father had given you. What was that like to see those clubs in person? Well, yeah, oddly enough, there's a little story that goes in. It's, it's very sentimental, of course, but a little story is that after I'd kind of grown out of those clubs, we had given them to my dad had given them to somebody else. And after a very long period of time, you know, years probably, oh gosh, uh, 30, 35, 40 years uh, at least, uh, I get a call from a, uh, a name that's familiar from the past. And the message is, hey, I've got these old clubs that I found up in my father's attic. And the story goes that they were yours. Would you like them? And I said, absolutely. Of course. So when I saw them, they brought back all sorts of memories. And uh, so when asked by the Hall of Fame, if what might be something I'd like to put in my locker down there, it was that because it, it brought back everything uh, to me that is meaningful in the game of golf. Now, if you were to take those same sticks out on the green today, what do you think you'd be shooting with them? <laughs> I, would, I would be afraid they'd fall apart to start with. <laughs> uh, I don't know. But as a kid, they were, they were priceless. So my dad, he'd take some old clubs, he'd, he'd cut them down, he'd, He'd wrap the the shafts in electrical tape and uh, or whatever he could find, and and off we'd go. It mattered little if it was a five iron or a nine iron or a two wood or whatever it was that they were mine. Now, when you think back to your memories with your dad, obviously you had a big sporting upbringing. It wasn't just golf; it was all sports you played. And uh, were there any other moments that really stick out to you in your development, just as a man, where your dad put lessons into you that you carry with you for the rest of your life? Absolutely. I, I think through golf, because uh, I've played all sorts of sports. There's a picture on the wall in, in my home of me with a little boy with a football and, and with a golf club and with a baseball. So I've been around sports a long time. Um, and, and it was my hope that my children would learn the same thing that I learned, and that was sports can help you become a better person. But that's up to you. You, know, you have to take those qualities that, that sports can give you. But my dad was a person that uh, a man of little uh, conversation, at least with his children, but what he said, you listen. And, uh, and so a lot of the things that he taught me on the golf course, he wasn't a professional. He was just a, an amateur in a little town in Southeast Kansas. We had nine holes, sand green, Muni, Muni golf course. So it wasn't a, a country club by any means. Right. But that's kind of where I learned. I learned those traits from my dad. And there's one that obviously shined bright in this Moments of Matter special. And it was, if you're going to start something, you finish it. And it was so powerful to hear how real it was for you to think, I, I might call it a day on this tournament. And then you stick in there, the, the memories of your father come into your head there, and you wind up winning. I mean, how powerful is that phrase for you? And even in how you, you've brought up your own children. If you're going to start something, finish it. Well, that's that's the... That was how I lived my life. I just kind of forgot about it, uh, inappropriately so, but it came at a great time. Uh, here was an opportunity for me to make a step one way or the other, because if you step in the negative, which is to quit, the next time is pretty easy. The next time is easier yet. And, and I've always said anything in life worth having that's worth having is not going to come easily. Sure. Um, and so this sort of goes hand in hand was don't start something you can't finish. And uh, and those were pretty powerful messages. And when I was sitting in that locker room, it was almost as if my dad was right there. And I'll, I'll never forget that. It was a very powerful feeling. And I, okay, dad, you're right. And I, you know, I put everything back and, and look what happened. Jeez, and you were done. Like when you look back on it, as you were first walking to that locker room in your head, you're done. I'm done. Well, I had played a lot. Uh, and this is 1976, I, I had a, a five-year-old daughter, I had a, a two-year-old son, and, and I, was, I wanted to see them. Uh, and I'd kind of put my, my personal life 
ahead of my professional life. But when you decide to get on that airplane and fly to the next tournament, you kind of have to focus on what you're doing. Right. And I had, I had lost that focus. Uh, and I had retreated back into the, I'm going to fall into a comfort zone. And it didn't seem right. Uh, and I remember talking to my wife saying, you know, I made reservations and I called her back. I said, no, I'm, I'm, I just can't do it. And hopefully maybe I'll see you tomorrow night instead. And, <laughs> I'm uh, sticking it out. <laughs> wow. Now we've had, you know, multi-sport athletes, but you're, you're in a category of your own. You were a stud in Colorado playing football, um, incredible football player. What kind of lessons did you take from the gridiron that you applied to your career as a golfer? Were there any there? Oh, absolutely. Uh, I think one of the things that I, I learned, and, and it goes both ways, by the way. Uh, mm -hmm. Football taught me a lot about myself and how to play golf. But golf taught me a little bit how to play, at least in my position. And I'm not going to say any position in football is singular, but you have to take on the assignment you have singularly. You can't worry about the guy next to you or the guy behind you. You have to do your assignment, and then you work together as a team. But what I found in golf that helped me in football was, was that, okay, here I've, I've got to commit to this shot or I commit to this play. I can't worry about the last one, and the, the one to follow this one is not as important as the one right now. And, and not to worry about the down and the yardage. Uh, do your best on this, this play. Or conversely, do your best on this shot. And once that's over, put it behind you. You 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 learn. I've tried to tell myself I learn from my positives more than I learn from my negatives. So from my perspective, if I could take those positives that I learned in football, discipline, uh, effort, uh, all the things, the, the the joy of doing something correctly with with other uh, teammates. But if I could take those and bring it over to golf then I would be better at golf. And conversely, if I could take all the, the accountability, the integrity, the honesty, all that stuff, and take it over to football, I'd be a better football player. So, boy, they, they, for me, they worked hand in hand. That's why I encourage parents to let their children do other sports because there's such a mix of what they can learn and become better people. Absolutely. One of the things you just hit on, so this whole Moments of Matter series, it's, it, there's the real glue to it is all the different morals and principles that are, you know, taught through each piece. And one of the ones you just nailed, which I think this is, you know, obviously perfect here talking to you, is honesty. I mean, obviously you have the classic moment with the putt, and, and that shows your honesty. You, you step up, and you're, you're the only one, really, and you say, hey, I, I two-putted this. As a football player, I watch that and I say, wow, the football player in him didn't say, oh, the ref wasn't looking? <laughs> it's cool to see that honesty was just a part of you to the core. Well, you, you, can't, you can't play the game of golf as, as well as you can. Your potential is never achieved if you're not honest with yourself. You know that guy in the mirror? You look at that guy in the mirror every morning, and he knows at least as much as you do. So you, that guy, he's not going to listen to you. Now, somebody else might, you might tell a lie or a semi-fib or a little exaggeration to someone else, but that guy knows the difference. And when you got to look at that guy all the time, how do you, he's not going to go away. Sure. You got to live with that guy. And I, I felt that if I did, if that guy there knew me better than I knew myself, then I, there wasn't anything I could pull over on him. So why not be honest? Why not take care of that guy? Because he's, he's kind of my twin, Absolutely. and I want to be honest with that guy. And if I can't be honest with him, then I can't be honest with myself. That's really cool. Who put that in you? Was that your parents put that in you from a young age? Or? Perhaps, but that mirror, it talks yeah. to me every – that mirror, I hate mirrors. He talks to me every morning. <laughs> wow. And one of, the other, one of the other principles, I guess, that we're talking about on the series is perseverance. And uh, the cool example was Ryder Cup. You see Bernhard Langer, and you see what happens to him with the missed putt. The following week, I guess it is, at the German Masters, mm -hmm. you see him sink a putt to win the following. What did that show you about him? And do you have any other stories about perseverance that, you know, people can use? Well, I think uh, in Bernhard's case, uh, what a very disheartening, uh, great effort, a disheartening results for him and the the 
British European team. Uh, great one for us. But we, I, I went with them over to Germany. Uh, we played together over there, practiced together. Uh, oh, wow. We're good friends. And, and I, but I played in that tournament. And uh, to see how he – now, granted, he's going back. His brother was running the tournament. It was an area that he was familiar with, being his hometown area. But nevertheless, he put that aside and persevered through – hey, playing at home is hard. I think it's harder than playing on the road, to tell you the truth, because there's so many expectations. But Bernard just put it away, uh, played well, won the tournament. I was really happy for him because I know how disappointed he was. But that's just one example of, of how to persevere. Uh, let's look at Jack Nicklaus at the age of 46 winning the Masters. How he persevered. Oh, Jack can't play anymore. Look at that. Let's look at Tiger Woods and his efforts at the sure. Masters this year. You talk about perseverance. So these are great players. But great players have that quality in them. They don't give up. They fight through the pain or they play through the, the problems. They, they had a two, three putts in a row, whatever. They find a way. They persevere. And you can't persevere if you give up. Absolutely. They all give up. One principle, baby. If you're going right. to start something, finish it. Finish it. You know, there's just nothing in life I think that's more rewarding outside your family that if you do something professionally and you bump up against a problem or an issue that's really big, but you get through it and you find success on the other side, there's nothing more rewarding. Absolutely. Now, let's say we're in dreamland. You can put together a threesome, right, with you included, and you're going to hit the greens. Who do you bring from the golf world, past or present, living or gone, and who do you bring from the football world to golf with you? No. Oh. Well, let me sidestep that just a moment. Uh, my, my, it, if I would have a foursome other than me, that would be one of the four. It would be my dad, my brother, and my son. Dang. So that would be my ideal. Okay, now get to your question. Uh, Oh, let's see. One from the golfing world, uh, a man that we read and hear so much about is Ben Hogan. Sure. I met Mr. Hogan one time for a very brief moment. I, I really didn't know the man, uh, but it would have been interesting because of all that I've heard and all that I've read. It'd be interesting to, to play with him just to see how he went about it. Uh, now from the football world, well, I've played with a few of those guys. Uh, I played with Ray Nitschke one time and really enjoyed that, but I'm glad I didn't have to play against him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it would be interesting to play with someone like, uh, uh, well, Peyton Manning. Yeah, I, I know Peyton a, li a little bit, and he's a really good player. Uh, he obviously has some skills. I mean, just not only Super Bowl win. I mean, he has some golfing skills. Yeah. But he has a lot of these things that we're talking about. Uh, and you, you, when you talk to Peyton, you can see how he was a leader uh, on his teams. Um, and that was a lot of fun seeing him go head to head with Brady. Yeah, yeah. Match there. Yeah. Um, uh -huh. So with it being Father's Day, uh, I, and with your dream uh, foursome being you, your grandfather, uh, your father, and your son, is there a message or is there a, a certain moral that you were sure to instill in your son when you're, you know, raising him, they pass down through all generations? Well, I think if for any, any kid, uh, whether it be my, my son, my daughter, my grandchildren, it matters a little. I think you, it goes back to what we just talked about, the honesty part. You give of 100% of yourself to your family. Uh, there's no one in this world that will love you more and give you more than your family and vice versa. And if, if you have that cushion, to fall back upon in hard times, whether it be financial or personal, whatever the problems you may, because you will encounter some. Right. Uh, you have that, that luxury of knowing that you have people that have your back, that you can talk to, that you can cry with, you can laugh with them. And that's very important. And it's the same thing with friends. If, if you're a true friend, I'll be there for you. No questions asked. Now, if you're just, we, you, we're friends only when it's convenient for you, well, then that's not a friend. Right. A friend is somebody that'll be with you uh, whenever you need them. And uh, those are things I think that uh, I, I've tried to teach my children is be careful how you, you go through life, but go through life enjoying it. Don't, don't back off from things that you in your heart love 
and enjoy and the people that you love and enjoy. Uh, it matters what, not what color they are, what creed they are, where they're from. What, if they're your friend, they're your friend forever. Absolutely. And if they're a true friend, they're there for the moments that matter. That's <laughs> right, baby. <laughs> um, Hale, thank you so much. It will have a happy Father's Day over there. And we thank you so much for coming here for the World Golf Hall of Fame Moments That Matter After Show. Guys, be sure to check out Hale's special. It is a story that will give you goosebumps, chills, and remind you why the sport of golf is one that we not only love to watch, but we keep it here in our hearts. Well, thank you, Charlie. I enjoyed it very much. Appreciate it.